so today we're going to be painting one of the flesh hound models the big guy in the box usually what you class as is like a sergeant the leader of the pack the guy that normally gets a, a slightly extra choice or a better stat somewhere along the line and we're going to be trying to get it up to around this kind of color scheme a higher tabletop kind of level not too difficult but looks good on a nice little frost base as well so let's get started so first of all we're going to go in with the Vallejo black primer we're going to do a xenophil highlighting where you put the shadow in from the bottom up but you've got to cover the whole model first and then you'll put a grey from the top down as if the sun was hitting the top of the model that helps us pick out the muscles um, the musculature all around the body gives us our shades which we can work up from but first of all we're going to hit the whole whole model with this surface primer fantastic stuff can't recommend it enough Now we're going to come in with our grey primer, again hitting from the top down, so that we can get that build up of lights if the sun was hitting, creates a natural shadow and highlight, and we'll work up from there. Let's have a see how that looks. So now we're going to get our first colour on. It's actually a mismatched colour I got. I got this um, Scale 75 paint. Two bottles, two different colours. It says purple. Actually, I actually think it's meant to be red. It does say purple though. It's a bit confusing. So as you see, one's red, one is purple. Um, so we're going to use the purple because we've got it. We're going to do a very, very watered down colour. And we're just going to layer it up. Um, hitting the top of the model coming down. And then we're going to go in and start building up those reds. So as you can see, the, the paint is super watery, super thin, it's almost like a wash or glaze. Obviously a little bit thicker than that, but we're building up layers. It's all about soft layering and texturing up rather than just blasting a model with paint, which I think a lot of people kind of fall into the trap of. You really want to smoothly layer them up and get a nice mould and flow of colours into each other. As you'll see, the colours will link in later. But yeah, you've got to do thin layers. Don't blast paint on with your paintbrush or an airbrush. Always try to layer up and layer up and layer up. A lot of air from the airbrush, dry it, paint, dry it, paint. Just keep that process going.
here we are now coming in with our shade colour, so to speak. Our second two-tone for the body. This bluey green colour from the bottom up. Slightly off camera there, do apologise for that, but you'll see as I go through. Basically just hidden from the bottom up. You can see I've got the model tipped upside down and you're just hidden underneath. Basically covering the shadow, the black, um, tinting that colour with this paint. It will hit some of the, the highlight and blend the two colours in. Um, you'll see. So now we're coming in with our red and we're going to start building up from the top down again. So we're using that red colour. And we're just going to cover over some of that purple pink that we've got on there. Just starting to build up the warmth of that colour and that flesh and mix the two colours together.
So now we're going to do, I like to use Vallejo Transparent Red. It's a fantastic colour for enriching other reds. If a red looks slightly dull, a little bit off colour, put some of this in. You don't necessarily have to thin it down either. It works quite well straight out of the pot. You can water it down. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. We're just playing here. And we, I've done this before many times with my reds. So I know what I'm doing with this colour. Um, so let's get it down and you'll see the red start popping up and becoming very rich. So now we're going to move on. So now we're going to get some colour onto this head. Some of the flesh I believe. Now as we're going through the video, because we're doing things at a faster pace, so we're going to get the flesh to this kind of look here but because I was going through the video didn't flush out the the airbrush as much as I normally would we get a bit of spitting and a bit of splattering on the model but we go back and we touch that up anyway so it all works out well in the end it's just a uh, going back and doing a bit of remedial work but you know we're playing here we're going back and forth we're doing what we do to get the best result
so what we're doing here is we're going to airbrush on a gloss varnish, a Vallejo gloss varnish. This gives it a nice glassy feel to it so that the, the wash can flow over the model rather than just sticking to the to the pigment, the dry pigment of a, it's kind of a rougher surface. Um, this will also allow us then to meld the colours together. It, it takes the edge off as well. When you put varnish on, you'll notice that it blends in the colours slightly, eases off the harder edges of the pigments. And when we put the wash on, it will blend in the flesh tones on the hips a little bit better and allow us to put a bit of protection on the model as well, which is quite nice. Um, and we're also going to paint the mouth now as well whilst it dries. It dries pretty quick to be fair, so you don't have to wait around. But we're going to put, put some purples into the mouth and build it up to a very lighty grey purple with a slight stipple effect, which you'll notice I do with the brush. Very thin paint, and we're just going to kind of stipple and paint it on rather than just paint like you're painting a wall. It's going to be kind of very thin and playing with the pigment. You'll see what I do with the brush and kind of get the idea.
so now we're going to start using this Vallejo ink it's a very strong strong ink and we're just going to get a bit of colour into the mouth you can always add some water if it gets too strong in the mouth fill it out and then wash it around a little bit just to blend some of the colours together and give a bit of depth to the back of the mouth you find the colour I put in on the walls and the sides of the mouth needed it a little bit something extra it was a little bit one dimensional so we're out. I'm adding in a bit of this ink in there So because of the slight overspraying from the, the flesh, it kind of lost a lot of the shadows. So I'm just going to use some inks and washes here as well. I'm going to go in first of all with Reichland flesh and just move it around a little bit into the recessed parts. And we're going to come back in later with a brush anyway and highlight around the tops. And then we're going to use a Tamiya um, smoke. It's kind of like a floor varnish. I think they've uh, probably got a massive markup from it because it seems like a floor varnish but um, a coloured floor varnish type material it's one of those materials that once it dries it can brush off and rub off quite badly so I would tend to suggest sealing it with a varnish again after it dries but uh, we're just going to get this in to get some depth and uh, a bit of shading into this so it's not so one dimensional and then later on we'll build up with a br paintbrush to get the highlights
so now we're going to use this it's kind of a greeny blue beautiful colors my favorite uh, wash by GW and we're going to use it just to blend the colors together quite watered down I added some water to the top of the lid and then you can always add water to on the model but you want to work around it quick you don't want to leave tide marks kind of those tea stain look so make sure you're moving it around quick um, playing with the edges so they don't dry too quick until you've got it to where you want it and we're just going to blend in it allows us to reconnect the colors as well it allows us to knock back slightly the flesh color more in line with the body color and we're kind of amalgamating everything together did miss the back of this flesh on around this neck so we've just gone back in with this right clone flesh just to get in behind because you don't want to get it from every angle because as the model moves around or someone picks it up and looks at it they're going to rotate it and you want to make sure that you don't miss too many of the different angles for the colors you know don't don't cut corners so to speak and we're doing what we do we're just we're playing with the colors anyway so sometimes we miss things but we can go back and we can fix it it's easily done so we just whacked in a bit of shade or in around the back of the neck So now we got this scale 75 purple it's a beautiful purple but we're going to use it quite thin um, we're not going to go in, go in heavy with this color again very watered down so it's more like a wash and a glaze and we're going to start hitting this fur this fur plume this mane on the back of this model we're going to do it so that we don't completely lose some of the colors from the reds and that in there we're going to build up the color though gonna let it dry and we're gonna build it up we're gonna let it dry and we're gonna build it up um, and again to blend into the flesh and the colors there
So now we're getting some colours down on this rock surround and we're doing it very thin watered down colour again and we're going to mix in some browns, some greens, some really light greys we're going to go back into the browns and greens with very thin colours and layer it back up again to give a more realistic rock look now a lot of this rock may be covered in snow at a later date but you don't want to skip these kind of stages now just in case it's kind of the parts that do show out are going to be looking a little bit odd um, so we're going to go around now and you watch how I just basically have a very thin watered down colour and we're kind of glazing and kissing it, getting over some greys first and then adding in um, the whites, not what well, were whites, it's almost like edge highlight on both, you see what I do in a bit, it's not hard edge highlighting, it's a very thin and it's going around the edges but also blending slightly off the edges, you'll see. So here we're kind of giving it a really light over wash and then we're compilling it back off with the brush where it's built up too much and we're going to keep doing that go around the model and then we're going to bring in the, the edges again later and we're going to bring in the greens and browns as we go you'll see
So this is where, as well, you can really see we're just stippling in the colours, reapplying them, layering them up. And this is, uh, you can see, this is taking me six, seven, eight, if not pushing ten minutes just to paint the rocks, and it's worth that little bit of extra effort. Don't cut corners on certain parts of the model. It's not all about the actual beast itself. It's all about everything that comes with the model, from top to bottom, no matter what it is. Going the extra yard will make a difference for the model and the end finished product, so it's worth really doing the, doing your going the extra bit. And we've got the skull in there to paint as well. Um, we'll come in and just do some painting on that. And this is going to be a two-part video, so make sure you catch the second part. We've still got a couple more minutes left here for just painting and getting this looking as good as we want, top notch. going to get some colour on the skulls just so we can get them done because we want to get it glued like I showed the, the, the model just now I want to get it glued to the base we've got frost bases we've kind of made so we want to get this done and I think we go and start off with some old wood and then we're going to build it up to a white kind of ivory as we go through the different colour transitions on the skull so there's two skulls on this bottom and we're just going to start putting the colours in and then we'll slowly highlight the ridges of the skulls and that as we go
so we've highlighted the skulls up so you get the ridges you get the teeth and now it's about ready to glue onto the base so I don't have to handle it because handling it and rubbing off around that tail the spikes on the tail um, we'll get some snow and whatnot on there as well we just look where we're going to place the model on the base we'll get that glued up and then we'll carry on painting we'll get the snow we'll get it all finished and wrap up so I know this has been a bit of a tef test um, video um, the sound quality I've got a new program I've got a new mic the mic doesn't seem quite to be up to it I know there's a bit of a grating sound and a um, interference sound in the background but I'm working for it this is a test video more or less it's a pretty long one to be fair an hour long but um, hopefully I might need to get another mic I think uh, maybe trim the videos get better at editing and trimming the videos but hey it's a learning process so first video test video hopefully as we go on we'll get better and better but thank you for watching if you have from start to finish i really appreciate it catch you in part two sound quality will probably still be about the same apologies for that um we'll just try and improve as we work forward thank you for watching